Let's see the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to look at our second conversation. Well, the federal government of Nigeria has signed a memorandum of understanding with an Israeli and Japanese companies to commence assembling and manufacturing of environmentally friendly green electric and smart automobiles by 2023. The National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure entered in that partnership with the Israeli and Japanese and Nigerian companies. So it means that it might just be good news for uh, the Nigerian automobile industry. Israeli ambassador to Nigeria, Michael Freeman, disclosed this during a meeting in Abuja saying that uh, we had entered a partnership which is a combination, like I had mentioned earlier on, and the essence is that the Nigerian technology would help address many challenges affecting the transport sector and environmental sector in Nigeria. According to the stakeholders and proponents of this project, the purpose is to solve problems of Africa and of the world at large by providing electronic motorcycles, you know, smart automobiles, the issue of fuel scarcity and, you know, fuel subsidy might just be a thing of the past uh, because, you know, the program is green and environment friendly. So it would offer people a cheap way and a safe way to transport. Uh, it has a technology to ensure that these motorcycles are used for legal and appropriate purposes. Well, the executive vice chairman of the Nigerian of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure also lauded the collaboration. He said that uh, this project has come to stay as it would be domesticated in Nigeria. According to him, uh, this project would see Nigeria manufacturing of Nigerian made electrical vehicles in the nearest future. And so the first attempt to domesticate certain technologies in the country, especially automobile industry, has not worked because of the continuous importation. I mean, that's a problem right there. But, of course, this is an agreement that's been entered. And let's see how far all of this uh, leaves us. We'll just get straight to the crux of the matter for the want of time. We have uh, Muktaq Mohammed who joins the conversation. Good morning, Muktaq Mohammed. He's a financial analyst uh, uh, joining us right there from Houston, Texas. Morning. All right. We also have Nika Gule, who is also a public affairs analyst. Nika Gule, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to our viewers. So I, I start off with uh, Mukta Mohammed now. Do you think that we're ready for this development? I mean, smart automobiles, uh, electronic vehicles, and what have you, the green you know, movement, especially where uh, we can really boast of you know, constant power. There are two things now, talking about green uh, you know, movement and also electronic vehicles. Thank you so much. Um, if you say whether we are ready, you, you and I know that we are not ready for that immediately because we need to put our house in order. We're talking about infrastructure. And you just said one major criteria for an electrical car, which is has to do with infrastructure and especially with power. And if you look at that by and by where we are today, you know we are not ready. But then you, you don't have to be completely ready for a smart technology to take off. You could even if those that are ready, they still have their issues. So we need to look at um, starting then um, where you know Nigeria have a way of devising a lot of issues to address their problem. Like if you look at the power issue, we are not coming up with um, we come up with solar system, we come up with inverters, we come up with all sorts to be to be able to uh, manage the situation so i think that was going to happen to the um, electric cars if uh, eventually we have any need for it um, but as it stands now I, I don't think it's something that we we can probably say is uh, we we are ready because again and um, there's some nigerians that already there are trying to build up electric cars even if it's not electric cars directly they're trying to build up um, motorcycles and have the government been able to um, 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 empower them or enrich them or support them i don't think the, the government have done that but because we easily want to sign a uh, memorandum of understanding with um, foreigners then not taking consideration into our own our own people too that are busy trying to come up with this technology even in the means of lack of infrastructure the only good thing i see there is because it's green and you know remember the energy the global crisis in terms of um, um, climate change and that's the only what what i see that is good there i think when we look at that we could say okay fine but outside of that, I don't think um, it will address our transportation problem. Our transportation problem is so huge that has not only to do with the vehicles, it has to do with major infrastructure, it has to do with good road network. 
And so I don't think that will be able to address our, our transmission crisis. And that don't, does not think it will address our subsidy scheme because when you look at these vehicles, then you ask yourself how much, how many Nigerians can be able to afford it? Because presently now with the government policy of, of the automobile industry, a lot of Nigerians cannot even afford fairly used car because those policies are not helping the common man to acquire cars. Interesting. Uh, um, uh, Mohamed, I'll come back to Nika uh, Gule. Um, uh, I, I don't know, Mukta may not be aware because he's um, uh, safely in Houston, Texas. But for those of us who are still here, I'm sure we remember the, the videos. Uh, uh, Nick, are you there, please? Since we, we've lost... Nick, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so, fantastic, sir. Um, I, I, I don't know if you saw, but there was a, a, a picture, a video, some user-generated video of someone pushing a Tesla on third, on third mainland bridge. I don't know if any of you saw that. <laughs> uh, you know, the Tesla went off and they oh, had to push it. Sorry? Did you see the video? Yeah. Oh, okay. It happened, I think, last year. Uh, believe it or not, they had to push a, a Tesla on third mainland bridge. I think that says it all. But, um, um, Nick, for, for, for this plan, um, it seems like the federal government w wants to partner with Israel and, and Japan to produce electronic Okadas. Do we need more Okadas in the country? Electric or petrol or what? Do we need more Okadas? Is that a, a convenient means of transportation for, for the masses? It, it is not uh, the convenient means of transportation for the masses. The, the most effective and efficient means of public transportation is the railways. For a country like uh, Nigeria of 200 million people, we should be moving people and goods on the race. Because, you know, you look at a place like Lagos, where you are speaking, now, speaking from. I lived in Lagos for many years. The whole of that traffic that is on Ted Mainland Bridge every day going into the island in the morning and the same traffic coming out of the island at close of work, only a few trains, just a few trains will carry the whole of that traffic away from the road. Only a few trains. If you look at all the trucks that are on the roads, either within the cities or between one city or the other, only a few goose trains, few goose trains will move all of that traffic off the roads. So in fact, it's unimaginable how Nigerians uh, go about uh, without the railways. You know, my good friend, uh, Mukta, who is in the U.S., uh, U.S. is one developed nation that has not taken to the railways like that. But that is because, you know, uh, the U.S., the, 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 the cost of petrol in the U.S. Is, is quite cheap, cheaper relatively compared to like in the U.K., where I am here now. Uh, and the, the, the U.S. Uh, people, they like to drive their cars. You know, they can drive their cars from, for, for several days from one state to the other. But in other nations, you know, like in the UK where I am, the, the railway is the, is the main means of transportation. But that, that being the case, if these Okadas come, our people say half bread is better than none. You know, if it is the Okadas that are coming, then that is okay. This uh, uh, MOU that has been signed, I have taken a look at the news item. And it portends uh, good news for the nation because, number one, apart from the environment you're talking about that will be greener, you know, there, there is possibility of job creation now. So job will be created. There is possibility of technological transfer, you know, between the Israeli and Japanese companies to our local people. You know, then there is, of course, the, the possibility of these people bringing in foreign direct investment, because if they have to set up the factories and all of that, monies are going to come in. So to that extent, it's okay. But as it is usual with everything in Nigeria, when the government is involved, it's a problem. Nikakule, so um, Nika we is, are almost out of time now, but uh, a lot of people, I mean, the technology transfer would have been quite exciting. It would be a plus for us. But to be very realistic, no nation is willing to transfer technology because it's a competitive advantage for them. And that's why we have suffered as a continent over time. 
because we have not decided to be innovative and use science and technology. So we constantly think that there will be, um, you know, transfer of technology waiting. But who wants you to, who wants to transfer their technology and knowledge to you so you become dependent and not depend on them for the product that they have to manufacture? So that's on the one hand. But quickly, uh, let's see if we can have uh, uh, Muktak Mohammed share his thoughts on this one. We have a sector that has complained about foreign exchange being a big deal for, you know, the broadband to establish, I mean, manufacturers to come up and set up their companies, especially for uh, made in Nigerian phones. Uh, that's a recent concern. So what becomes of this company, uh, you know, in terms of foreign exchange, looking at 2023? They look at the, the MOE they were talking about. They said that we'll be doing it and we'll assemble those cars in Nigeria. And um, well, uh, for me, I think that would be good. Like he said about job creation, also environmental um, um, uh, um, conditions also will be friendly. But again, when you talk about FX, you know why we are we are having those challenges because we've refused to do the radical economical change that we need to do that we in the area of um, removal of subsidy. I think when we do that, we'll be fine. But again, the FX challenge is not going to last forever. We can't say because of the FX challenge, we're not going to do anything. We have to wait for the FX challenge to be over before we begin to think about um, those cars coming in. But like he said, also, we are looking at our motorcycles, and which I think for me is um, is, is, is a no-brainer because, um, I mean, we are even suffering it all over. Um, Lagos is planning to, to for total prepare for total ban of uh, motorcycles. Other states are because of the terror the terrorist concern, and even government, even the federal government, thinking about total ban of uh, motorcycles. So, how would that create the kind of job that we are looking at, and are they be able to address the security challenges before they say they are bringing in those motorcycles? So, for me, it's not about the FX challenge. We can say because of FX, we are not going to do anything again because that's that's how it's going to be. It's not going to be like that forever. Okay. But again. We need to look at the holistic picture of this. And when I talk about the holistic picture, we're talking about the challenges that have to do with infrastructure, the challenges that have to do with um, security, which is key. And again, this MOU, we don't, we don't think it will come into stand. But now remember that Nigeria is good at signing MOU that take forever to take off. So for me, I'm not really excited about it yet. Um, I'm, 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 I'm only excited because we are thinking green. But um, if you look at the start of the Bianvawa infrastructural challenge, it's nothing to be excited about. All right. Uh, well, that's it this morning. We have to go. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the breakfast. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, interesting. There's so much to talk about as far as uh, going green is concerned. Um, some people feel it's an illusion when you talk about electric vehicles because you have to get electricity from somewhere. Now, how the electricity is produced is also something that could affect the environment negatively. So it's a, it's a big conversation, but we see how that goes. Um, that's the size of our package. Please follow us on the social media pages, plus TV Africa uh, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as YouTube. And on YouTube, you can also find us at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. We have all our content uploaded on there. Well, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for being part of the show. I am Messi Bopo. Have a fantastic Monday. And my name is Kofi Bertels. We'll return tomorrow. Good morning.